Hi everyone, Sam Smyers here. I'm an artist and music producer in Los Angeles, California. Today I want to talk to you about transient shaping. The first thing that I want to go over is what exactly a transient is. A transient is a high amplitude sound at the beginning of a waveform. If we take a look at this drum loop, we can see the transients happening at each of these drum hits. So the high amplitude sounds at the beginning of each of these waveforms. Transient, transient, transient. And what a transient shaper does is it can allow you to emphasize or decrease the transients in your audio. There's a couple of transient shapers available. The one we're going to focus on today is this one called Transient Master, which is by Native Instruments. There's also one by Isotope called Transient Shaper. And there's another one by SPL which is called Transient Designer. So if you have any of these plugins, you can do the same thing that I'm doing with the Transient Master. Let's take a listen to this drum loop. So we can hear a lot going on in this drum loop. There's a lot of background noise. There's a lot of air in the drum loop. And what happens if I take down this sustain? We'll start to hear that background noise and that ambience disappear. So now the kick is really emphasized, the clap is really emphasized, and we took out a lot of that ambience to this drum loop. If I do the opposite and I increase the sustain, it'll start to make that whole loop sound a lot busier. So now it just sounds crazy busy. The snare sustain is extended, the kick sustain is extended, and then we have all this background noise that's being brought up in that loop. If we want to affect the attack, we can make the kick a little bit punchier and the clap a little bit punchier. So you can hear as I increase the attack, it gets a little bit more clickier. You hear that clicky sound, a little bit more snappy. If I decrease it, the drums will sound a little bit softer. And what we're doing there is we're reducing the attack of the transients. Let me just leave this set, take down the sustain a little bit. And so what I did is I increased the attack and decreased the sustain. And if I were going to process that loop, I would probably leave it at this setting. Let's go ahead and turn the transient master on and off and listen to the loop with it and without it. So it just sounds a little bit tighter with this transient master on it. We can also apply the transient master to a cleaner loop. Here is a loop with just a kick and a snare. So there it's very tight, very punchy. So we increase that sustain, we hear the snare sound getting a lot longer, kind of like an 80 sounding snare almost. So there's different ways we can affect different drum loops using the attack and sustain. We can also apply this transient master to individual drum sounds. If I just apply it to this snare sound, I could make the sustain uh, longer or shorter. or mess with the attack.
And we can do the same thing with just an individual kick. If we want to shorten the tail of a kick drum, we can change the sustain. If there's too much clickiness in the beginning of the kick, we can change the attack. In this kick sample, we hear a little bit of room noise, and so the sustain, increasing it brings out the room noise, and then decreasing it really cuts out that room noise. The attack, decreasing it makes that kick a little bit softer sounding, and then increasing it gives it a lot more punch and, and clickiness. So if you need to push it through a mix, you can increase the attack, or if it's a little too much in the mix, has a little bit too much punch, take out some of the attack. So a really cool thing that a transient shaper does is that it reduces the reverb, as I've shown in this first sample, and this kick sample. It took out that backroom room noise, and it basically can take out the reverb out of some drums or instruments. And here, for example, is a pluck. So in that loop, we have some reverb underneath those plucks. And if I apply the transient master and decrease the sustain, I can remove some of that reverb. So that's helpful if you don't want a lot of reverb in a sample or a loop. Or if you want to add your own reverb, take out some of the reverb of that sample by decreasing the sustain. And if I increase the attack a little bit, now I have this super plucky sound without having it washed out by the reverb. So that's a pretty big difference just going between turn this transient master on and off. I could also just apply the transient master to a reverb. So if I take these drum samples and I have them on a track that has reverb at 100%, so now this track is just 100% reverb. So I have this Valhalla Vintage Verb, I have it on a room preset and I have transient master on this reverb. So I have the reverb and then after that I have the transient master. So let's listen to what happens when I mess with the attack and sustain. So we hear the biggest difference with the sustain. It sounds like we're affecting the decay of the reverb without changing the reverb plugin. So that is a cool way to change the reverb tail on a reverb without actually changing the settings on the reverb plugin. You can use a transient master. Transient master can also be useful for other instruments like piano. If you really want a plucky piano sound, you can add in a transient master and change the attack and sustain on that piano. Let's go ahead and listen to this piano sample. So now I have this very punchy in your face piano without being washed out by the reverb. So you can see using a transient master or another transient shaper can help you clean up your mixes if you have some samples that might have a little bit too much room noise or background noise or too much reverb you can 
clean them up and add more punch with this transient master. Here is a bass loop. Let's listen to this transient master on the bass loop. And this is supposed to help if you have like a distorted guitar sound or a bass sound. It's supposed to help affect the attack on your transients by activating the smooth. So I'm going to turn the smooth on for this bass loop. Let's listen to the loop. It sounds like it's being plucked, so let's take off some of the attack and hear how that sounds. So if I do this take off the attack, raise the sustain, it takes out some of that plucking sound in the beginning and makes it a little bit more boomy. Let's decrease the sustain and see how that sounds. So now it kind of sounds a little punchy without too much of that pluckiness in the beginning. Raising the attack, decreasing the sustain, now it sounds punchy and plucky. So there you can hear the difference with the transient master on and with it turned off. So this transient master works great for guitars as well, basses, pianos, loops, taking out the reverb, affecting drum sounds, kicks, snares. If you have hi-hats in a loop, you can put on the transient master, decrease the attack, and that might bring down some of the brightness of the hi-hats. It's a very useful tool. So try a transient shaper next time in your mix. Grab this transient master from Native Instruments. This is a good one. It's a pretty simple design. I like to use it, and I hope it helps you improve your mixes. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.